<clears throat> the story begins in 1935, in quantum mechanics, when two particles become entangled, their properties are linked, no matter how far apart they are. For example, if you measure one particle spin to be up, the other particle will instantly be spinned down, even if it's light years away. This seemed impossible to Einstein, who couldn't accept that particles could influence each other instantly over vast distances. He called this spooky action at a distance because it violated the principle that the information can't travel faster than light. Einstein believed what's called local realism, the idea that objects are only influenced by their surroundings and cannot affect each other instantaneously at a distance. And realism, the belief that physical properties exist before measurements. That is, there are so-called hidden variables that determine the outcomes of quantum measurements. Fast forward to the 1960s and physicist John Bell Bell developed an inequality, known as Bell's inequality, to test whether quantum mechanics truly allowed for spooky action, or if Einstein's theory about hidden variables was right. Bell came up with a mathematical inequality that could be tested experimentally. Now, to understand why Einstein was so bothered by spooky action at a distance, we need to take a step back and look at the paper that first brought this idea. The famous EPR paper, published in 1935 by Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen, hence EPR. In this paper, they raised the fundamental question about quantum mechanics. They were trying to show that quantum theory, as it stood, couldn't be a complete description of reality. Their argument was based on this very phenomenon, entanglement. They proposed that there must be some hidden variables that could explain the particle's behaviors without violating the laws of physics. These hidden variables would restore local realism, keeping everything in line with Einstein's view of the universe. This paper set the stage for decades-long debate about the completeness of quantum mechanics. Bell wanted to settle this debate once and for all. He realized that while the EPR paper made a strong case for hidden variables, there was no clear experimental test that could definitely show whether quantum mechanics was correct or whether local realism still held. So Bell set out to provide a framework for testing this fundamental question. In 1964 Bell formulated his groundbreaking theorem providing a way to experimentally test whether the predictions of quantum mechanics could be explained by local hidden variable theories. His key insight was that if quantum mechanics is correct, the observed entangled particles would violate his inequality. Imagine that two entangled particles are emitted from a source in opposite directions. Now imagine two Stan Gerlach devices oriented in directions A and B to measure the spin of each particle. Their measurements will either report a spin down, represented by minus 1, or a spin up, represented by plus 1. Now introduce the correlation between the two detectors. P of A and B is equal to minus A dot B, for arbitrary orientations of A and B. This is exactly what quantum mechanics predicts the outcome of the experiment to be. Notice that if A and B are parallel, the result will be minus 1, and if A and B are orthogonal, the result will be zero. If we now call the hidden variable lambda, local hidden variable theories say that there exists some function that will determine the outcome of the experiment. We call these functions a and b, and they are uncorrelated and only depend on the orientation of each detector and lambda. The reason for them being uncorrelated is because of the locality assumption, that no signal has time to travel between the two detectors, so a can't influence b and vice versa. Now notice that when the detectors are perfectly aligned, we have that a of a lambda is equal to minus b of a lambda in the a direction, regardless of the value of lambda. We can now average the product of the measurements, which by definition is the integral of the function times its probability density function, or PDF for short. 
To be clear, this is the average outcome of the product of the measurements. Here, rho of lambda is any PDF of the hidden variables. We assume only that the PDF integrates to 1, without imposing any restrictions on its complexity. Given that a equals minus b, we can rewrite the integral with a minus sign and substitute b for a. If we now introduce a third unit vector c, which can point to some arbitrary direction, we can form the difference p of a b minus p of a c, where we just repeated the same logic from before. Now is also a great time to pause and go back if you don't understand any of the steps. We also recognize that a of b lambda squared is equal to 1, since any real number squared is positive and a can only take values plus minus 1. We can rewrite the equation above, where we just multiply the whole expression with a of b lambda squared and factored out a of a lambda. Finally, in the last step of the derivation, we recall that the absolute value of the product of a of a times a of b is equal to 1 again using that a can only take values plus minus 1. Also, rho of lambda times 1 minus a of b times a of c is always greater or equal to 0. This is because the PDF of the hidden variables are positive semi-definite and the product of a of b times a of c is always equal to plus minus 1. So it has to be greater or equal to 0. So the integral above can now be rewritten by taking the absolute value of both sides. Or even more compactly, the absolute value of p of a b minus p of a c is always less or equal to 1 plus p of b c. This is the famous Bell's inequality, which we have just derived. And it should hold for any local hidden variable theory under the minimal requirement of it being a probability density function. Other than that, we have made no more assumptions about the nature of the hidden variables, which is quite remarkable. However, it's not that this inequality should hold on experiments, it's the violation of Bell's inequality that is consistent with quantum mechanics. Take the example when three unit vectors A, B and C lie in a plane formed 45 degrees. Quantum mechanics now predicts that p of a b is equal to 0 and p of a c is equal to p of b c, which is equal to minus 707. Now plugging this into Bell's inequality, we get that 0 0.707 should be less or equal to 1 minus 0 0.707, which is equal to 0.293, which is obviously a violation. This means that there cannot be any local hidden variable theory that is also consistent with quantum mechanics. Bell demonstrated that if quantum mechanics is correct, one cannot have both locality and realism. In other words, either particles do have well-defined properties until measured, violating realism, or they can influence each other instantaneously across any distance, violating locality. But it wasn't enough just to prove this mathematically, and in the decades that follow, experiments were conducted to see if quantum mechanics would violate Bell's inequality. And, spoiler alert, they did. Experiments testing Bell's inequality faced what are known as loopholes. These loopholes were potential flaws in the experimental setup that could allow for classical explanations, rather than quantum mechanics. The two most important loopholes were the detection loophole and the locality loophole. The detection loophole refers to the fact that in an experiment not all particles are detected. In these setups the detectors might miss some entangled particles, leading to biased results. This could give the impression that particles behaviors were still consistent with local hidden variable theories, even if the quantum mechanical predictions were violated. To fully trust the results, they needed to ensure that experiments detected almost every particle, without any missing data that could skew the outcome. And the locality loophole. This loophole dealt with the timing of the measurements made on the entangled particles. If the measurement on one particle could influence the measurement on another particle, even if the particles were far apart, this would violate the premise of locality. 
in early experiments the distance between the detectors wasn't always large enough, so there was a risk that the information could travel between the two particles at faster than light speeds, undermining the non-local nature of the experiment. For a long time these loopholes created uncertainty about whether experimental results were truly confirming quantum mechanics, or if they could be explained by classical physics. But in recent years experiments have closed some of these loopholes. One of the most significant milestones was in 2014, when a group of scientists conducted a loophole-free test of Bell's inequality. In this experiment, they carefully designed their setup to eliminate both the detection loophole and the locality loophole. They used highly efficient detectors to ensure that nearly all particles were detected, and they ensured the timing was precise enough to prevent any possibility of information traveling between the detectors. And not to forget the groundbreaking experiments on Bell's inequality, conducted by Alan Aspeck, John F. Clauser and Anton Seilinger during the 70s, 80s and 90s, which earned them the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics. However, despite the progress, no experiment has yet fully closed all the loopholes at once. Nevertheless, the evidence strongly supports quantum mechanics and the non-local nature of reality, even if some loopholes remain open. John Bell's work has left an indelible mark on the field of physics. His theorem has not only changed our understanding of quantum mechanics, but has also led to a series of experiments that confirm the strange, non-local nature of the quantum world. Bell's legacy goes beyond his theorem. He changed the way we think about reality itself. In his last years, Bell continued to work on the foundational issues in physics, though his focus shifted slightly. He became increasingly interested in exploring the philosophical implications of quantum mechanics. Bell was skeptical about the idea that physics was close to a final, complete theory and maintained a deep curiosity for the limits of scientific knowledge. Unfortunately, Bell passed away unexpectedly from a cerebral hemorrhage, a sudden bleeding into the tissues of the brain, in 1990 at the age of 62. Unknown to Bell, he had reportedly been nominated for the Nobel Prize that same year. <laughs>